Hey Ravens fans, I'm Garrett Downing and this is Ryan Mink. It's time for this week's edition of the Flock Mailbag after a crazy week in the NFL. Yeah, seriously. I mean, Peyton Manning, we got the bounty, and we, now with Tim Tebow, it's it, nuts. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to stop. So much for the NFL offseason. Yeah, really. <laughs> you, you talked a little bit about Tim Tebow, Ryan, and that actually is our first question today. It comes from George Barnes. He wants to know why the Ravens didn't get involved in the Tim Tebow, Tebow mania sweepstakes Right. Really, the reason is because they're not interested. They weren't interested a couple years ago in the draft when, you know, they had the chance to take him in the first round and they traded back with the Denver Broncos, who, who used the Ravens pick to take Tim Tebow. So they weren't interested then. They're not interested now, really. It, they don't need a starting quarterback. They don't need a backup quarterback. And, and the reason the Jets brought him on is really to be a specialty player running the Wildcat that Brad Smith used to run in New York. And if the Ravens want to run ro the Wildcat, they've got Tyrod Taylor. Mm -hmm. So so they really don't have any use for Tim Tebow. Yeah, and the other thing is that you don't just get Tim Tebow to fill a role, even though that's what the Jets are trying to do, because there's the circus that comes along with him and everything. He has such a loyal fan base, and the Broncos found that out this year, is that you don't have a guy. I mean, there's a lot of guys in the NFL who are backup quarterbacks that you might not even know. That's not going to be the case with Tim Tebow. Everybody's going to know him. People are going to be buying his jersey. He's one of the most popular players in all of sports, and the Ravens really just weren't interested in bringing that circus to town. So the Jets, I think that kind of seems right up their alley with all the personalities they have on that team. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens with him there. But the Ravens, they were fine to just let that pass. Yeah. All right, next question deals with wide receiver position. And Nick Bryce wants to know who's the number one prospect to fill that number three wide receiver slot now that Lee Evans uh, has been cut. Well, the Ravens could certainly draft somebody there. That wouldn't surprise me. This wide receiver class this year is pretty good in the draft. They could still sign a free agent. You know, that's a possibility. That although there's been a lot of wide receivers taken so far or, or signed, there's still a lot left, and there's going to be more once cuts are made. But if we're specifically talking about who's of those who are on the roster right now, I'm going to go with Laquan Williams. You know, he, he really kind of showed something to me at only four catches for 48 yards last year, but he showed a playmaking ability, I think, to go up, make some plays deep down the field that the Ravens could use in that number three spot. Yeah, I think uh, Laquan could definitely maybe step in and fill that role. I think another guy who's heading into his second year is Tandon Doss, and he's a big-bodied wide receiver that the Ravens definitely like, and he could probably compete for Laquan um, for that spot, and I can see him maybe stepping into that role. My hunch tells me what you alluded to earlier, which is I could definitely see another person being on the roster. Whether it's a free agent or whether it's a draft pick, I could definitely see somebody who's not on the roster right now coming in and competing for that role and potentially winning it. Right. So we'll make sure we keep track of that moving forward. And if you have more questions you didn't get them in today, make sure you get a hold of us on Twitter, at Ravens, and also post questions on our Facebook wall. And as this news continues to pour in throughout free agency, make sure you keep it locked right here on BaltimoreRavens.com.